Jimmy, you ought to make a big success selling Chevrolets. I think you've got what it takes. You joined us with a fine reputation as a salesman in other lines. Gee, thanks, Mr. Warren. Of course, I've never sold Chevrolets before, but I believe I can do it. I'm sure you can, Jimmy. And I want you to know that I picked you as the most likely to succeed out of a number of young men we've been considering to fill this opening in our sales organization. That's mighty flattering, Mr. Warren. I'm going to do everything I can to try to prove you're right. I want to get started just as soon as I can, too. Do I start selling right away? Well, first you gotta know your product. Now, here's some things you wanna do before you even think about contacting. Prospects seem much good. Well, they're the best I've got, so I'll stay with them. Yeah, I thought I knew something about trucks. But there were three different models that seemed to fit his job. I didn't know which one to concentrate on. Oh, well, you can't sell them all. No. But I'd hate to think that sale I made to old man Simmons day before yesterday is going to have to last me all month. I don't know what's the matter. I, I just don't seem to get the hang of this business. But you see, Mr. Brooks, the Chevrolet in the action assembly is different than the Plymouth unit. I understand the Plymouth has the most expensive construction of any car. What's the difference in the two knee actions? Well, I, I don't know the difference, but I do know that Chevrolet is better. So well there. And there's that call on Beacon Street. It's way over on the other side of town. Well, might just as well go after it right now. Mr. Harrington, $390 is just the absolute best we can do on your car. And that's exactly the reason why I won't buy. You're too far out of the line. But Jimmy, we've got five thirty-nine four two doors on a lot now. We just can't go another cent higher on an appraisal. We don't need 39 two doors. Okay. I see your side of it.
thought you two boys might like some refreshments. So here's a pitcher of nice cold lemonade. Thanks, Mother. Got something mighty important on your mind these days, haven't you, son? Oh, not especially. Just the usual things. Business, you know. Sales problems, salesmen. Now, don't try to fool your old dad. There's something extra special worrying you, or I miss my guess. You know, I was just wondering. Take the average young fella today. He won't get out and work the way we used to when I started to sell. What makes you think that? Well, take this young fella, Jimmy Hill, for example. Last month, when I was looking for another new car salesman, he looked to me to have twice as much on the ball as anybody else I could find. He looked like a pretty good boy to me, too. Isn't he working out? Oh, yes, he makes a sale now and then. But that isn't the kind of a man I need, or want. Hasn't the man learned the knack of selling, I suppose? Well, I guess not, or else he'd be doing a great deal better. Don't you know what he's doing wrong? I can see enough from his sales reports. Mm, pretty much on his own, then. Mm, yes. But he's had a good thorough basic training. I haven't got the time to play nursemaid any of the salesmen. Maybe not, son. But I wouldn't know about that. That isn't what Harry Carpenter told me when you started out to work for him 11 years ago. But I got out and worked. Hard. And that's what I'm concerned about right now. Young fellas today won't work the way we did 11 years ago. Maybe not, son. And then again, maybe they're working harder than you think. Today, you may feel that you were a pretty good man when you first started in this business. And you probably were. But you owe a lot of your success to the way Harry Carpenter worked with you. Got you started straight. He used to tell me about the mistakes you made. You may not have known it, but you really served an apprenticeship. Every man does. Has to. In every business. Yeah, I suppose so. Remember how closely he worked with you the first year? <laughs> he used to tell me about it. Yeah, I remember how he used to talk to me about my prospects and how I was to handle some of them. But you know, I always thought that that was because he knew you so well. Maybe he had more of a personal interest in me. Nonsense. Not Harry. He worked that hard with every man he ever hired. And he was smart enough to realize that he knew more about selling cars than any man on his sales force and that it took his direction and leadership to get the most out of his men. And I don't believe men have changed much since then. Now about this Jimmy. Doesn't he work? Doesn't he get in for the morning sales meetings? Oh yeah, he's always punctual. He never misses. But take his prospects, for example. Why, well, I looked them over the other day and it's just about the poorest list I've ever seen. I remember one of the first things that Harry drilled into me was the importance of having a good list of prospects. Yes? Then he showed me how to go about getting it, how to keep it up, how to cover the list, and how often. Why, I had the importance of prospects drilled into me from the very first day I started to work. Has Jimmy? Has Jimmy what? Had the importance of prospects pounded into him since the first day he started to work. Well, I've told them how important they are. Yeah, but have you shown him how, when, and where to get them? Have you checked on him every day to see that he did it right? Dad, I've got other work to do. Harry wasn't too busy to make a good man out of you. Huh? Say, I think I'm beginning to see what you mean. I wonder. Say, maybe that's the reason I haven't had very much luck with Jimmy. Or with Henderson, that other fellow I hired last year. You know, he looked pretty good to me too, Dad, when I first hired him. Certainly would be worth a try. 
Yes, sir. Come to think of it, the time I'm spending on other things right now might be costing me a whole lot more than I think. Men need leadership. Leadership is important. Oh, I've always known that, Dad, but I never thought about it in connection with my own business. But starting Monday morning, I'm going to stir things up a bit. I'm going to show these fellas what leadership really means. And then we'll see... Sales are the most important thing in this business. And we're going to work closer together than we have in the past in order to get more sales. Well, that's all for this meeting, but I want to check with each one of you personally before you go out this morning. Jimmy, I'll talk with you first. The meeting's adjourned. Jimmy, from what you say, I'd put these two away for two weeks. Your time is too valuable to be spending on them right now. And then I'd take these four in this order to conserve your time in covering them. Now, have you got any others up in this end of town when you get up there? Uh, no, sir. I don't believe I have. All right. I'll give you the names of three Chevrolet owners who live up that way. And all three of them should be about ready to buy. I don't think you drove quite far enough with that prospect before you let him take the wheel. Yes, Mr. Warren, but he bought the car. Yes, I know, I know, but I'm speaking about your demonstrations in general. I noticed that you're inclined to turn the wheel over to your prospect pretty early in the demonstration ride. Now, you know, of course, that when you drive first, the prospect almost invariably drives back over the same route that you took. Yes. Then if you'd driven onto that rough stretch up on Summit Avenue, you wouldn't have to direct him over it later. That would give you a chance to have him keep his mind more on the car than on the road. You see, it's usually best to. I'll go along with you again this morning, Jimmy, on these first two calls. Gee, that'll be swell, Mr. Warren. I'll sure appreciate your help. I always learn something, too, when we go out together. sure to have Mrs. Beck come into the showroom tonight with her husband. Okay, I'll sure do it. And thanks again for your help, Mr. Warren. That's where your truck data book comes in. You'll find the information you want on that special equipment right back here. Now show this information to your prospect, too. Just don't keep glancing at it and then telling him about it. Let him read it. Very often, the printed word is a big help in closing the sale. Just too many of them on hand now, George. That's the reason we couldn't afford to offer a higher appraisal. Yeah, I can see your side of the picture. Yes, but there's a good side too, George. For example, right now we have in a single 39 Plymouth four door on the lot. And that means we can afford to make somebody a pretty good offer. Say, I've got a prospect downtown with one of those. Not too hot, but I was going to get to him again in the next few days. Fine, get him in here today, and I'm sure we can make him an offer that'll close a deal for you. And besides, we can use. Mr. Milton, you can depend on what our Mr. Hill here has just told you. And I'll give you my own personal word, too, that if you have any trouble along that line, we'll make it good. Well, I don't know. The last two cars I bought when I had trouble, it was always my fault, never the cars. Well, we want you to be just as satisfied with your new Chevrolet next year, Mr. Milton, as you will be next week. That's exactly right. You see, we couldn't have afforded to make the investment we have here unless we gave the kind of satisfaction that make our customers come back to us year after year. We want you to be a regular customer too, Mr. Milton. In fact, we hope you'll buy your next 10 cars from us. That's why we'll give you the kind of service it takes on this one 
to bring you back for the next one, and the next, and the next, so on. You see, that's the only way we can hope to... Believe me, leadership pays. First hire good men, and then see that they're well trained on their own product and on competitive products. Second, be sure they have all the equipment and selling helps they need and know how to use them. Third, help them plan their work to make the most effective use of their time. And fourth, stay in close touch with every man. Know what each one is doing. Work with them. And fifth, keep up their enthusiasm. Encourage every man, every day. And never forget, as I did, that people who represent you need your health. <laughs>